Coming up next, it is a rematch with everything on the line between number one Oklahoma and number two UCLA. An elimination game. One of the nation's top two seeds is going home. One is going to Sunday to face James Madison, needing two wins to make it back to the championship series in 2021. Two years since that classic game two. New first baseman for Arizona, Julia Kutsianopoulos, here in the bottom of the sixth. Oh. It is three, four, five time. Hard to the order for Florida State with Elizabeth Mason. I'm getting to the point in the game where it could be the final at bat of these players' careers. And Mason will hope to add one more memory on this field where she has thrived. That's off the end of her back to left field, down the line. Mionio is there, and out number one recorded. Here come the Bruins. What do we got here? Snacks? Sandwiches? Likely, yes. Softball players? Yes, snacks. And remember, Kevin, Patty Gasso told us earlier this season that that 2019 loss is a big motivation for this season. Oh. Told us she really never felt like they were the same team last year. And with the extra motivation, not only from the loss of last season, but the lingering motivation from that 2019 loss. The team has taken no prisoners this year, oh. but now they're in the elimination bracket and they will need to beat UCLA to fight for their fifth World Series championship. 2-0 to Cassidy Davis, as right now it's Florida State fighting for its World Series life. Another fifth year senior. Lopez falls behind, 3-0. Devin Flaherty on deck. Okay. A four-pitch walk for Davis. The tying run will bat. It will be Devin Flaherty. Florida State in this game has only gotten one runner to third base and unfortunate for them that it came with two outs because Danny Morgan ended up hitting a fly ball to center field could have been a sacrifice fly if there were less than two outs but just have had limited opportunities to make things happen and they can't pitch run for Davis here she'd be out of the game already pinch ran for her in the fourth with Riggs well one two Flaherty now is Lopez has lost control five in a row out of the zone and a visit from her old friend Deja Mulipola. You can tell it's just a positive conversation with Mulipola, just giving her good eye contact, saying, I got your back, throw your best stuff, just like you have been all year. When it's working, nobody can hit it. Which can pump you up in a way when you need it the most. Devin Flaherty has hit five home runs on the year. One of Florida State's on-base leaders. Not as much power as she did in the short season last year, but has picked it up near the end of the year. And it takes a call, strike two. This is not typically a Florida State team that is going to beat you with a long ball. Only 42 home runs, 56 games. Ball.
football. What's Taryn Moat thinking in the Arizona dugout now for a 3-2 pitch call? You know, it's tough to call pitches right now because she's just having trouble finding the strike zone with everything. So, go to the pitch she knows best, possible screwball. Hey. There it is. But it's hard for a pitch caller, and it's even harder for somebody who doesn't know a pitcher as well to be like, oh yeah, I can guess exactly what's coming here if a pitcher's missing their spot so bad. It becomes a guessing game, and calling pitches can be fun, but it's not fun when your pitcher can't find the strike zone. A seventh pitch coming to Flaherty on 3-2. And another one out of play. I think alumni secretly hope that their team makes it to Oklahoma City just so you can go and have fun with all your old teammates, go back to the old field where you had so many memories. I'm seeing Jesse Warren, Alex Powers, Megan King, Jessica Burroughs. So many alumni just getting to come here and just cheer their program on for both sides, Arizona as well. Jesse's getting really into it right now, smacking the sign up front. What a lineage that Lonnie Alameda and Florida State have put together. Fourth trip to the World Series under Lonnie. The 2018 championship, the first for the ACC. And there are some Oklahoma City heroes. <laughs> Another 3-2 for Flaherty from Lopez. And popped up, fouled again. It's two hits on the board for Florida State. They have no walks and they do hits. And one of those hits, an infield single. An infield single came on the 11th pitch to Kaylee Harding. This will be the 10th to Devin Flaherty. One out, one out in the sixth. And Flaherty gets drilled. And the Seminoles put the tying runs on base with one out. Drilled is the best way to describe it. It just hits her right smack in the in her ribs. Oh, just take, take your time. Just take your time. Devin's going to get a second to breathe here. Lap it up with Lonnie Alameda. And turn it out in the circle. The player who has speed, and now she's like, okay, I just got smoked in my back. And now I've got to find a way to run fast in case there's a ball in the gap and I can score. And again, you don't have the speed they want at second. Davis has already been pinch run four. Florida State hoping for the last lead change, or the first lead change in the World Series since they took the lead in the 2018 Champ Series. And the batter is Kaylee Harding. Harding does have pop. This is not a Florida State team, as we said, with a lot of power. But Harding has a team high 36 RBIs, five homers, 17 extra base hits. Seminoles are 0 for 6 with runners on today. 0 for 2 runners in scoring position. If she was on that. Mm. She just missed this. Lopez ties up Harding. Three straight strikes after hitting Flaherty. It's a good battle back by Mariah Lopez, who had shown signs of wildness, and then goes to this group ball, gets Harding to check swing. She was unsure, just didn't know if it was going to be a strike. Just. Caught her off guard. Danny Morgan. Hell! 
strike one. It's a clear pitch now that Mariah Lopez is going to when she needs a strike to lefties and righties is that screwball. Came in with the bases loaded and two outs in the fourth and Danny Morgan batting. Got her to fly out. Ball. Danny Morgan's going to be going to South Carolina for grad school whenever this ride ends. She'd like to defer her next phase of her life just a little bit longer. The 260th game of her epic Florida State career. And Morgan sends one in the air to left. Mourinho is at the wall. And it's gone! Danny Morgan is not done yet! just got to insane that Lopez had been living on this screwball and a senior like Danny Morgan is going to pick up on it. And not only does she pick up on it, she gets her barrel to it and barely hits it over the fence, over Mionio's head, just out of her reach to give Florida State the lead. Hey. That, kids, is your first World Series lead change since 2018 when Florida State took the lead in the champ series against a team out of the Pac-12. The 25th home run of Danny Morgan's career. She had two this season. They came in the same game at Syracuse. And no disrespect to the fine women of Orange in Syracuse. But Central New York in mid-April is a little bit different stakes-wise than Oklahoma City in early June. Well, Kevin, this is what we saw in the Super Regional, too, and what we talked about then and what we're talking about now for why Florida State is so scary, even with a team hitting 260, team batting average, just over 40 home runs. A ground ball from Charlotte Lopez's throw is wide. And the inning will continue as the super senior Shelnut stands on first. I think it was easily going to be the third out. It brings Lopez toward the first base side. Rushed her throw a tad too much because she just felt Shellnut right there hustling down the line. Didn't have a good grip on it, forced it. And we had an interference call earlier in our first game here from Christie. No, nothing there. Shellnut legally in the baseline. He won. And Florida State's going to make a move to go to Kirsten Landers to pinch it off the bench. Is Danny taking a fake phone call right now? Wow. Just when you think this World Series can't possibly get any better. And now for Arizona, try to keep it right here with the 9 1 and 2 hitters coming up. Kirsten Landers, a pinch hitter. Oh. Off hit to send Florida State to the World Series down in Baton Rouge. You just can't beat experience. Said that in the Super Regional, I'll say it here until I'm blue in the face. This Florida State team has five experienced players that know what this field feels like, know what the pressure feels like, know how to play with their back against the wall because they did it in 2018. That led them to a national championship.
If you're looking ahead to the top of the seventh, and don't do that yet if you're Arizona. You need one more out. It'll be Martinez, Mayonio, Carranco. If anybody gets on, Jesse Harper. It will be Martinez, Mayonio, Carranco. And if anybody gets on, Harper. And it will be that with a Florida State lead, thanks to a home run from Danny Morgan. Can you even believe it? A veteran, a senior, steps up again in the postseason for FSU. Got a one-run lead. They just need three outs. A stunning sixth inning. Florida State has taken the lead on a three-run home run from Danny Morgan. Anna Shilnut returns to the game to catch. Catherine Sandercock returns to the circle, meeting three outs to keep the Seminole season alive. And strike one starts it against the number nine hitter, Peanut Martinez. The winner of this game plays Oklahoma State at 9.30 Eastern, 8.30 local tonight. The loser of this game will bid goodbye to its season and bid goodbye to, either way, an extraordinary senior class. It will be the junior Martinez, the freshman Mionio, and the senior Caraco to back against Sander Cock. 0-2. And I know every Arizona fan is thinking about whether or not this is the last time they'll see Mike Candrea and Cardinal and Navy. Amicon 0-2 at the World Series since 2009. Trying to win number 16-75 at the U of A. The most ever in Division I softball. Fourth most wins in Division I sports, period. He has not publicly announced whether he'll be returning or not next year. We've seen all sorts of emotion from him in this postseason, avoiding the direct answer about his future. Will he have one more game in him this year? And beyond that, that's up to these Arizona bats. Feels like a tall task right now with the way that Sandercock pitched at the top of the sixth inning where she struck out the side and quickly able to get ahead of Martinez 0-2. You have to know that every single person who knows anything about the game right now is thinking about Mike Andrea and if this could be his last game. job with two strikes by peanut martinez to hit this ball hard and it's hit right at muffley just dies in front of her and she just can't get her glove to it she has struggled today had some challenging plays or plays that she could make but martinez finds a way to get on for her team and arizona's gonna pinch run isabella dayton for her Little bit of a stolen base threat. Three for four this year. Martinez did not have an attempt. Question now, do you bunt with Mayonio to get to Caranco, then Harper? Yeah, I'd lay down a bunt with the way that Sandercock throws a good drop ball to take that force off the of second base. There's the bunt for Mayonio. It is foul. I guess the other side of this is, Mayonio is a 442 hitter, so... You know, folks say play the percentages of the sacrifice. There's a very good chance that Mayonio is going to get a hit if you don't bunt. Yeah. There are a couple of different ways for Mike Candre to attack this. Hey, if it is going to be Mike Candre's final game, why not one more strategic puzzle to solve here in the seventh inning? Who knows? Mayonio two for three, a couple of infield singles today. Squares to bunt. Shows it again, and that's a called strike two. We've seen in this game that Sandercock was able to get the bottom of the zone, but she gets the top of the zone with that pitch call right there, with that strike call.
to short. Mobley to second. And she gets the lead runner. Dayton is out of the four, six to four. Leonio replaces her at first with one out. Of course, the ball goes right back to Muffley. You get tested again. Now, Mayonio, Arizona's best stolen base leader, stands at first. 12 for 13. Reina Caranco. Ball. Ball one. Two ground outs and a sacrifice bunt for Caranco today. In the NCAA tournament, just two for 19, does have three walks. The oh. fifth year senior shows butt and takes a strike. Unless there's a double play, Mike Kendra is gonna get one of the best home run hitters ever to the plate, Jesse Harper waiting. Mike with a quick word with Tanya Garrick behind the plate as Florida State huddles up in the circle. Sandercock being able to use this low rise ball in this inning, get the top of the zone, and Coach Candrea asking, was that a called strike? Were you calling her on the bunt attempt? But two times now in this inning, she's throwing that low rise ball and getting the call. The sophomore to the senior. Oh. And that is clearly high for ball two. Three-time all pac 12 player, Caraco. 227th game of her career. The pac 12 leader in batting average two years ago. Lonnie Alameda, all hands on deck meeting for the Florida State infield. Yeah, I mean, it's a good time to have it. Bronco up to bat, a senior Harper on deck, middle of the lineup, coming out for Arizona. Every pitch right now in a one run game, late in the game, it just matters so much. You want to make sure everybody is on the same page. Of course, Coach Alameda just, as per the usual, making our team laugh a little bit, smile. She always talks about communication between the infield and the pitcher. Lonnie Alameda said it's something that's hard sometimes for our new pitchers to grasp, just how much we talk as a cohesive unit. And they have to communicate here because Arizona's got all kind of options. Good runner at first, good contact hitter at the plate. 2-1 count. A ground ball from Caranco sneaks into center field. Maeno's going to third. She gets the right home. She will tie the game. A ground ball double from the fifth year senior Caraco. And Arizona is alive. You can see that Devin Flaherty was playing more toward the first base side. There was a bit of a shift and then Danny Morgan, the center fielder, was playing more toward the left center field gap and it just beat her. It got all the way to the fence and when you have the speed of Neonio, you are thinking as soon as that gets past the outfielder, I'm scoring, I'm tying up this game. And now Jesse Harper. Mike Candrea was not ready to stop windmilling. He knew it from the moment that ball crossed into center. And now he's got the player who's tied for the second most home runs in Division I history. Trying to give Arizona the lead right back. A ground ball to Muffley. High hop and a tough one for Jersey to handle. Too hot to handle, in fact. And the Cats have two on as Muffley continues to get peppered at short. Peppered, the best word for it. That one hop just really took off. It looked like it was going to stay low, and then it hit something and just rose up. 
and ended up hitting her in the chest. Arizona using the drop ball and using the ground and hitting it hard. Three hits in the inning and four batters. That's an infield single. Caranco had to stay at second. And the batter is Deja Mulipolo. First team All American, the fifth year senior, the future oh, Olympian. Jesse Harper gets a lot of the accolades for her home run power, certainly, but Mula Pola, no slouch, 68 in her career, and the Pac 12 lead in 2021. Third in the country in RBIs coming into the weekend. Deja with a ground ball to Mason at first. Mason will get the out at first. Caranco to third, Harper to second on out number two. in an inning where a junior and two seniors have picked up hits will try to deliver in her redshirt freshman year. Palacios with a first pitch slam foul. You can tell that Arizona is just fighting in this inning. Charlize said when she talked to us during the week, it felt like a different team during the regionals. She said at the end of the regionals, I started crying. Coach started crying. Noticed a, a change this year in the looseness of this group. Found that to be the case when the Wildcats started postseason. That is on the ground a second, and that will send us to the bottom of the seventh in a tie game. Arizona is alive as Caranco scores Mionio. Mud Cheryl and Mason coming up for the Knowles. Janelle Mayonio, after a fielder's choice, came all the way around from first to score in the top of the seventh on a double from Reina Caranco. And the Arizona Wildcats down to their final two outs have tied the game against Florida State in a World Series that much like a Stefan bit on Weekend Update has truly had everything. We've had perfect <laughs> games. We've had now a lead change finally. we got Arizona and Florida State trying to keep their season alive. Join this list of teams that have made it to the championship series after losing day one. A three-run sixth for the Seminoles, a run in the seventh for the Wildcats, and now Florida State can walk it off with the top three in their order. Yeah, I got to feel good about where you're at if you're FSU, especially with that momentum that you grabbed in the bottom of the sixth inning with the Danny Morgan home run. Got some vets coming up with Sydney Sherrill and Lizzie Mason, Cassidy Davis potentially. Adam Martinez returns to the game in right field after David pinch run for her. And will be a freshman to start before those veteran bats. Katie Mudge. Gets Mariah Lopez and a ground ball through the right side. The winning run aboard for Florida State. The freshman Mudge with a first pitch single. Arizona has the corners in for Cheryl. Florida State's best hitter. Not squaring away, she takes strike one. She does not have a sacrifice bump this year, Sydney Cheryl. When you have a 459 on base percentage, you're typically not asked to do that.
Don't forget, we've got two more games tonight. UCLA and Oklahoma, one versus two in an elimination game. Coming up in just under two hours. Winner of this game gets Oklahoma State tonight. Oh. Sydney Sherrill with through most of the year has played with a lot of expectations put on herself, a lot of pressure, and Coach Alameda has felt like I mean, the postseason that it was just a new season for her where she could put that back behind her and kind of erase it all. Oh. Her eye is as good as anybody's in this World Series. Did strike out looking in the fifth, but confident to take ball two here. The first team all ACC player. The all time doubles leader in the ACC, Sydney Sherrill. And she stays alive. Two, two did go for the outside pitch that time. You know, a big part of Florida State's game, too, is stealing, putting their runners in motion. But they have to be careful with Deja Mulipola back behind the plate. They can't take as many risks because she's got one of the best arms in the country. Only 12 attempts against her. Mulipola has caught four. Mudge not going anywhere. Cheryl sends a fly ball out of play. From Moore, Oklahoma, Redshirt Jr. In Tulsa area, hour and a half or so from here. Trying to keep the Seminoles alive in her home state. That's into left field, and that will sneak out of play. Game number 2,112 for Mike Candrea at Arizona. Not many as nervy as this. Eighth pitch to Cheryl. And a fly ball into short left field. Harper going out. Mayonio coming in. And Mayonio's got it. The big bat of Sydney Cheryl cleared for the first out in the bottom of the seventh. Yeah, that is a big out to get her to pop up. A good at bat by Cheryl. She saw a lot of pitches, got off a lot of pitches, but Mariah Lopez winning that one. <laughs> Now Elizabeth Mason. A first pitch swing and a foul ball out of play. Seen some good catches in the stands. I feel like any ball that goes in the air, these fans have it. They're not going to let it touch the concrete. No errors that I've seen. And there have been a lot of opportunities. Yeah, a lot, yeah. Just like these two teams, very nice defensive performance. Ball. On a one, a ball to Mason. We were in Baton Rouge a week ago, and Florida State was down to its final out in the eighth inning of game two, and Elizabeth Mason came through with a game-tying home run. This home run on this field before as well. Oh. I know that you hear that cliche that you throw the stats out the window, but I feel like it's just not true for any team more than it is for Florida State when it comes to their experience and their ability to lock in when it matters most. That's a foul. <laughs> It's funny, I think. It, it's almost like for five innings, you keep the stats in the window, and then at the end of the game, you chuck them all out. Yeah, 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 just get rid of them. Because Mason and Morgan and Davis, despite down years offensively, are still fearsome presences in the box. A ground ball here, softly to second base, and it's thrown away. Mudge is gonna go for third, she is saved! Game-winning run, 60 feet away for Florida State. No connection between Caranco and Harper, an error against...
walks the second baseman. And Cassidy Davis is going to bat with a runner at third, trying to win the game. Just a slow developing play. The ball took a while for the ball to get to her, but the base running by Munch to see that ball down and know that your speed can advance you another 60 feet. This could be the biggest play of the game right here by the freshman. And this is how Florida State speed their base running. This is the way that they've been beating teams. Might not have a stolen base in this game, but that counts as a different form of a stolen base. Mike Hendry just went out to ask Lee Adame about interference. There was none. Our rules expert, Christy Cornwell, has confirmed that. No interference on the play. So, at Mudge is at third. Mason at first, a fielder's choice in E4. And Cassidy Davis can win it. With the infield all the way in. Davis takes aim at what would have been ball one and instead turns into a strike. A ground out in the first, a ground ball single in the fourth, a four pitch walk in the sixth. The 50 year senior in her 219th college game. Ball. And the game winning sacrifice fly. And game one of the Super Regionals against LSU. Fly ball would likely do the trick here with a good speed of Mudge at third. Hell. Got the called strike. Lopez did, one and two. Davis went way out of the zone to get that one. <laughs> yeah. That strike call the pitch before just was in the back of her mind. Like, okay, if he called that one, I don't want him to call this one too. You keep going outside here if you're Lopez. Yeah, I tried that pitch again. You're up one and two. A rise ball up and in her hands. One, two. Davis elevates it in the left field. This is going to be deep enough. Maonio makes the catch. Mudge scores. And the Never Say Die Knowles are dancing on. A date with Oklahoma State tonight. Three in the sixth, one in the seventh. And Florida State once again thrives on Elimination Saturday. Mike Candrea just wants to be sure. Nobody left early from third, and nobody did. And it is the thrill of victory for Florida State, for Arizona, the agony of an 0-2 World Series. A senior class that Mike Candrea referred to time and again as the gold standard is taken out by the garnet and gold of Florida State. This can be overwhelming with emotions of your career, thinking about your program, thinking about what's next, thinking about your coach. And the senior class just has done everything the right way for Arizona. We don't know the next time that we'll see Mike Candrea on a softball field after 2,112 games and the most wins in softball history. His team fought valiantly today, but our Capital One rewarding performance and the win to Florida State, Cassidy Davis with a walk-off sacrifice fly. And Kaylee Mudge across from third to keep the Seminole season going.
just go back and think about how important it was that Mudge got herself to third base so that there was a sacrifice fly opportunity for the senior Danny Morgan and Davis, two seniors who have been here before with national championships, had all four RBI. Cassidy Davis is with Jalen. Thanks, guys. Cassidy, this time last year, you had your sight set on going to PT school. How grateful are you that you didn't take that chance and gave yourself another shot here? Um, I mean, I definitely think that that decision was a really hard one for me, <laughs> um, obviously. But uh, really talking with my seniors, like I came back for my teammates behind me. They're the main reason I here. I the main reason I'm here. I love them so much. And once I thought about how much I want to be back here, it was a pretty easy decision. You've been on this stage before. You guys have played on this stage before. How much did your experience help you in this game today? Um, definitely think my experience played a huge role. Uh, definitely been in, being in these big situations before definitely kind of kept me cool and collected. Those nerves were still there, but I definitely, from my experience, have been able to figure out how to calm them down so I could just focus on doing my job. You guys have Oklahoma State tonight. What can we expect from that matchup? Uh, I think you can expect us to fight. I mean, if this game shows the best, we're just going to keep throwing punches regardless of the scoreboard. And we're, we're fighters. We're fighters. So we're just going to come out and keep swinging. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It's going to be a rematch of the 2019 Super Regionals when Oklahoma State went into Tallahassee and won as a 13 seed. 10 versus 5 tonight after Oklahoma UCLA. Two of those teams are going home. Two are going on to semifinal Sunday. What a day. <laughs> what a Women's College World Series. So much respect for Coach Candrea and everything that he's given back to the game. All the history that has been left and his games played. Holly Rowe asked him a couple of days ago about the rumors that this could be his final year and Mike said I'm all for honoring this team. It's been a marvelous career. I don't want to get emotional about it. You look at the things you missed and some opportunities talked about his family and then talked about this senior class all seven came back and their legacy is added to a list of accomplishments that would need thousands and thousands of pages to one school, what Mike Candrea and what Arizona softball have done for this sport.